See, a harvest worker with no time for people, let's be honest, he's really not a harvest worker, right? The harvest is about people. I'll tell you a story. Some messages, when you get them, you get a theme, at least for me anyway, things come together, builds momentum, it goes really well. Well, this time, for whatever reason, I struggled and struggled with the message and didn't come together. So by Wednesday afternoon, I was starting to feel a little pressure. And I also decided I had to jettison my first six pages of notes in the introduction. So I'm starting to feel pressured up, right? And Wednesday, I leave work and I have a plan how I'm gonna spend the night. And I get a call from a family that says, hey, can we bring you guys dinner tonight? Can we go to Jet's Pizza and bring you guys dinner and visit tonight? And I was like, sure, it'd been better if they'd said Garcia's Gut Buster Pizza, but Jet's Pizza's really good. So I said, sure, and that kind of was an interruption to my plans, a very pleasant interruption but I lost about four hours. So I figured I'd make it up on Thursday. Well, Thursday morning, I had a meeting, then another unexpected meeting. So by noon, I was starting to feel even a little more pressured up. And then a sales guy stopped by at the farm unexpectedly, wondering if I could swing by to see him. I figured it'd be a five minute stop. So I went back to the farm, still hadn't had a chance to get to the message. And the five minute stop, the guy wouldn't quit talking. And I, I started to say, you know, I gotta, I gotta take off, start making money, and then he start talking. Pretty soon, the guy said to me, you know, I feel like I need to do some repenting. And I said something lame, like, how are those tigers doing this year, you know? And then after about an hour and a half or an hour, I left, grabbed something, went back to the office, it's a little before two, closed my door, and all of a sudden, a stream of people start coming to my office to see me. They don't only come in my office, they, they sit down and they start talking. And even people that don't like me came in my office to talk to me. And now I'm starting to get agitated. At about four o'clock, I got up and I closed my door again. I took a couple of deep breaths and I put my head down. I said, God, what is going on? And I think this is what happened. God said, people is what's going on. The harvest is about people. Your choice, are you gonna pursue your own agenda or are you gonna care for people? So then he said, are you really gonna get up Sunday and instruct people about turning interruptions into opportunities? Because that was the title I had. Then. Tears start coming down my eyes. So, got over that, told God, look, I'd like to do better in the future, and I'd like a do-over with the sales guy. So then I started really cranking. Stuff started really flowing. About five o'clock, I sent my wife a text and said, things are going good, I'm gonna stay here and finish the message. About five minutes later, I get a text after sending that text from a person saying, hey, can I stop by your house in a few minutes? And I thought, hmm, I might be dumb, but I'm not stupid. I think maybe God is putting me to the test. So I said, sure. And my wife and I spent a delightful hour with this person. I never looked at my watch once until they left. That's how I know it was an hour. And then the next Friday morning when I'm cleaning the barn, the sales guy calls me. I have a chance to talk to him. But here's the thing, the interruptions never stopped. Had a plumbing emergency Friday night that took four hours and some Lord sent some good friends to help me with that problem. And I will just tell you this, I never got back to the message till 11.30 yesterday morning. But the difference is how I looked at people And life was way better trusting the Lord, trying to stay on the harvest, 
He's the Lord of the harvest, putting this into his hands. Three guys we talked about this morning. Which guy do you want to be and which guy do you think you are, okay? You got the teacher of the word, telling other people what they should do from God's word. Maybe he's a small group leader. Maybe he's just a teacher or a parent or whatever. Somebody who knows the word and is entrusted with trusting. You want to be that guy who tells others what they should do but doesn't do it himself? Or do you want to be the Levite, the disciple, the follower of Christ who's been set apart by Christ to work in the harvest and yet looks good on Sunday, doesn't do anything on Monday? Sees some guy laying on the side of the road, doesn't lift a finger, goes to the other side of the road. Do you want to be that guy? Or do you want to be the Samaritan who was commended by Jesus? But you just got to try to understand there's, there's problems with being the Samaritan too. See, Samaritan was lowly regarded by other people, particularly by God's people. He had to interrupt his plans. Whatever he was going to do in Jericho that day didn't happen. He went off his agenda to minister to this person. He got his hands dirty. He was defiled with the blood and the nakedness and everything from helping the other guy. He had to pay out of his own pocket to help the, to help the guy and put the innkeeper. He had to use his own oil and wine to cleanse the guy. And he put his reputation at risk with the innkeeper, who apparently he knew, because he said, I'll pay the guy's bill. Now, there was no recognition or thanks. As far as we know, he never saw the guy again. So do you want to be the teacher who doesn't do what he says? Do you want to be the disciple who doesn't work in the harvest? Or do you want to be the Samaritan who has to do a lot and be available and spend a lot of money? See, a harvest worker with no time for people, let's be honest, he's really not a harvest worker, right? The harvest is about people. 